learning disabilities are very common. An estimated 5-10% to of Canadians and approximately 50% of students receiving special education have one. My name is Raphael. You're a great. I am um, 20. I want to be a uh, music career, mu music business, so. What do you want to do in the music business? Well, during the drums, we went to um, coding the song, so. I want to I want to uh, go to a 12 boy trips, a 12 boy bus, um, something like that, yeah. I think Rafael is be able to to do everything by himself. I don't have to be on top of him. Like for me, it's the same as my other children when they grow up. Mm -hmm. Only I have to help him more and because my other children, they are very intelligent, for example, and I have to help him in the homework, but that's it, more hours. A learning disabled child um, is always going to have difficulty with that? reading okay. and okay. they are going to need um, you know, assistive technology to get them through volumes of reading. Like eventually they will read, but they'll never read at the speed that you or I do. And they will need, there's a program out there called Kurzweil, and what it does is it reads to them. And they also have a program called Dragon Naturally Speaking, which will pick up their voice. Yeah, like at school. Are you glad you're on March break though? Yeah, so happy for my break. <laughs> have I witnessed a child being discriminated yeah. against? Um, well, there's another set of children in our school. They're classified as MID, which is mildly intellectually delayed, and they have their own issues. And their discrimination is with their peer group. Peer group can sometimes be very cruel to them, and I've witnessed that. Have you or Raphael faced any sort of discrimination? Never. He was always welcome in everywhere we went, and and they always admire him, the way he looked, the way he behaved. And he's always with me in many organizations that I'm involved in, in the Spanish club, in the school, complementary school of Spain, and he always helping me out. I've been in Chicago, I've been in Memphis, I've been in Italy, Rome, and that's it. So, What'd you go to Rome for? Oh, I see Pope Benedict XVI for my posse program. Weren't you nervous? Yeah, I'm happy nervous, so. I think it's good for kids to be integrated. Um, however, you, uh, there's a time though where they do need support and we get that through educational assistance. And sometimes I think the MIT kids might benefit from a small group setting as opposed to being integrated all day because it's very hard for those kids to be in there all day and to try to keep up or try to um, follow the curriculum, especially as the grades get older. Developmental disability is a term used to describe a lifelong disability in connection to mental and or physical impairments evident before the age of 22. This is what I didn't say in the, in the interview, but I think the world needs the affection from these children. Yes. And they always say, oh, please, like, yes. stop, stop. The term developmental disability, which includes Down syndrome, autism, cerebral palsy, etc., is used to refer to disabilities which have an effect on a person's daily functions. These functions can include troubles with learning, mobility, self-care, self-direction, speech, a capacity for independent living, self-sufficiency, amongst many other things. What sort of advice will you give soon-to-be parents who will encounter these kind of problems? The experience I've had with parents is they don't accept it at first and they have to, they gradually grow into acceptance, but it's not something that's easy to accept that your child's not going to A, grow up, go to college, get married, be independent, have a job. That's a very hard acceptance for these people. So it's, you can't really, um, you can't do it overnight. Like it's just something that happens. You, you just have to, just one of those life things. Like I have to, to tell them from the bottom of my heart, that is the best thing happening in your life to have somebody like Rafael.